Chris here, and we've put together a spliffy 15th episode of the Maritime Medical Marijuana Show for you today. Today's show is brought to you by Karmic Compassion Society. At Karmic Compassion, we believe people with conditions who may be treated for the use of cannabis should be able to do so without fear of discrimination, persecution, or fear of arrest. At Karmic Compassion, they take care of people from patients from Ottawa to Halifax. They take care of by being they help people grow, prepare, consume, and manage their medical marijuana. Taking a puff here off of the herbal air. And I'll explain that machine here a little bit later on as I go through the show. But uh, I'm vaporizing today and uh, doing it because it's kicking my butt all over the place. So, anyway, a couple of shout outs I want to shout out about. First of all, it's Mom Maritime as you for medical marijuana. Again, that's a, it's an organization uh, many of you are aware that I'm uh, associated with. and. Uh, and I stand uh, firmly behind, and uh, they're doing a lot of work to try and uh, protect our rights as Canadians and uh, medical marijuana patients here in Canada. Uh, I suggest you go check them out, uh, mum.ca, and uh, see what they have to offer and see what you might be able to have to offer them. I uh, also want to mention uh, Ted Smith at uh, hempology.ca, uh, fantastic guy. Great website, uh, the organizer of the Fight the MMPR campaign that just went down on Thursday. Uh, Ted, one hell of a guy. Uh, also, then there's Jason uh, from the MMAR Coalition Against Repeal. Uh, Jason and the Coalition have uh, recently just released a video of John Conroy. He's the lawyer that will be uh, taking our case and uh, launching the injunction against the against Health Canada uh, about the MMPR to stop some or all of the proposed uh, regulation changes. Uh, also is David at uh, madstories.ca, M-M-A-D stories.ca. David does uh, uh, sent in a little video clip for me to share with you a little uh, when I get to the gadget corner. and. Uh, want to thank him for continued uh, maintenance of the Mad Stories website. It's a great page and uh, I recommend a lot of people go check it out and uh, see what he has to offer you. He's been uh, working on getting his Section 56 application and uh, as he puts new paperwork together he puts it up there so you can see at what stage he's at and what he said to them and what they've said back to him. So check it out and uh, if you're interested uh, you can see if it's something you might want to try and Pursue yourself. So you've talked to your doctor and he's approved you to use medical marijuana and you're legal. But now what do you do? You can't talk to your doctor about it. He doesn't even know about vaporizing. It's not his fault. He doesn't get taught it in school. It's just one of those things. He admits to not knowing anything about it. And even though Health Canada is supposed to have enacted this expert advisory committee, uh, the doctors don't want to be the gatekeepers. And uh, that's why we're here. We're here to help you uh, figure all this stuff out so you don't have to feel like you need to go to a gatekeeper to get the medicine that you need to get you through every single day. Um, today we're going to talk about the Marijuana for Medical Purposes Regulations protest that just went down on Thursday. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the petitions as they're being done and which have been sent in. Uh, to Gadget Corner, we're going to talk about the Herbal Air, the little rig here, and uh, the release of the John Conroy video. Uh, from the introduction of the medical marijuana uh, program uh, proposed changes on the 15th of December, we were given until this Thursday, the 28th of February, to voice our opinions on the matter. So if you've been following along, here's what's been happening. Last week we organized a sign making session and petition signing. It was uh, actually at my place here and uh, there were other ones throughout the province and uh, throughout the country being put together so people would be prepared for Thursday. The petition uh, that Megan Leslie is going to present to Parliament on our behalf and has now been sent to Ottawa to await her at her office there. Uh, on that, more than 100 signatures were collected in the last couple of weeks. Again, it was a shame that we had to destroy so many other signatures through uh, ruined uh, petition pages, but uh, it has to be done correctly. I mean, they won't even get it through the House of Commons 
if there's any, there's a staple hole in it, uh, if you didn't fill it out exactly the way it's supposed to be, I understand, screw Harper, free the weed, but that's, those comments don't belong in a petition. Uh, it's a shame that all those signatures get uh, ruined, but uh, we only needed 25 to be able to put the petition in, and we've got well over 100. Uh, but uh, anybody that missed out or wants to say that, uh, oh, I wish I could have signed, all I'm going to say is between Debbie and I and uh, anybody else that was doing it, we put ourselves out there. We were as available as could be. If you didn't sign it, I hear you bitch about it after the fact when uh, we're all screwed because of what the conservatives would not do us and you're going to get a slap on the head from me. The same goes for the protest on the 21st. The numbers were pretty low and this was one of our last chances to be heard before the changes are basically enacted. But where was everyone? I didn't see anybody. But I'll see everybody bitching on Facebook next year when we're screwed and people are wishing they had done something about it now. Then they realize that now is then, and then it's too late. The protests went well, all things considered. Out of the 300 possible MP offices across the country, we covered approximately a third of them. Medical marijuana patients and their supporters were out across the country today protesting the proposed changes to the medical marijuana access regulations. They're killing our quality of life. I used to take I don't know, almost 20 pills. I went through every one of them and every one of them killed some part of your body. Under the new regulations, which are set to be implemented in March of next year, the government will no longer produce and distribute the drug, and patients will no longer be allowed to grow their own pod or have someone grow it for them. Instead, that market will be opened up to companies. It's the most natural herb there is. They're treating it like it's the heaviest drug in the market. And they're not using it to get rich. They're not using it just because they want to get high. They're using it to ease their pain. Darcy Pittman lives on a fixed income. He says if the changes are implemented, the cost of a gram could go from 2 to $8, a price hike he can't afford. Insurance companies won't pay for this stuff because it's marijuana, it's a drug. If this is our last option and they're taking it away from us, then we're at a loss and so that's why we're here today. All of today's protests were taking place outside federal constituency offices. This one was outside Megan Leslie's. It is medicine, and yet we have all these crazy rules and regulations. We have these obscenely long wait times, and it's not fair. It's not just. Uh, those folks just want access to their medicine. The NDP MP says she, too, is concerned about the new legislation. Something's got to give. I mean, we really do need action, and so I think what they're doing is great. Maya Aswad, Global News, Halifax. Some had more folks than others, but it was the MPs that we were trying to influence uh, on their way back to Parliament and uh, have us fresh in their minds when the issues come to uh, come to be talked about. Uh, my own protest experience uh, was at Peter Stouffer's office. Uh, he's the MP for uh, the Sackville area, and. Uh, he uh, shares the parking lot and building with the Vegetorium, a farmer's market uh, in Fall River there. And uh, we've been set up there for about an hour, uh, me and uh, another uh, carload of two people and another guy, he was there. So four of us, two cars, and uh, we had some signs that stuck in the snow banks out in front of the place, uh, post some of those. And uh, like I said, after almost an hour, he comes screaming and yelling out from with his arms waving and saying, we've got three minutes or he's calling the cops, okay? This is his parking lot. I said, well, this is, a, this is an MP's office. I mean, he's an elected official. You have to expect to have people, you know, exercise their right to peaceful protest. I mean, like, I'm allowed to be here. He said, this isn't his parking lot. His parking lot's around back. I went, all right, well, I'll move. So we moved down to the street. But before three minutes was up, he was back out screaming at us again how we were going to ruin his business because 
where he's a grow place for produce and all of his customers are worried about high quality produce and stuff where I'm talking about growing meds apparently this was going to ruin his business I said Look, I want the same thing you do I'm looking for high quality meds that's what we're fighting for right now uh, he didn't want to hear any of it but I told him he needed to stop yelling at us and that uh, you know, we were I was packing the sign up as fast as I possibly could and like I said he actually did us a favor. We drew more attention parked down right down the street uh, than we did sitting up in his parking lot like there was nothing happening. So, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what your problem was, bud. You could have just come out and talked and asked and s spoke to us and not screamed and yelled, but no. Um, karma's a bitch. You know, if you ruined, if, if anything ruined your business, it's because you're a horrible person. Okay, thanks for nothing. Uh, That being said, Mama's going to be holding our next meeting. Uh, it'll be on vaporizers, and uh, what we'll be doing is uh, we're we'll bringing different models in that uh, I have and other people have. And uh, between all of us, I figure we get twelve to fifteen varieties of uh, vaporizers. I'll see if I can get a hold of a couple others from uh, some of the stores. Maybe somebody will donate one or two that we can use for demo. And uh, we can show how they work and uh, which ones have what benefits and which ones have which downfalls. And people can uh, make an informed choice. So <clears throat> you're not spending a couple hundred dollars on a vaporizer. That you're only going to use once or twice and then it's going to piss you off. Because they're not all good, okay? You need to know which ones. And once you've, once you've used it, it's yours. So the next meeting is supposed to be on the 9th. But um, try and add an extra week to that. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Keep your eyes open online. And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, make it seven days later. It seven days after the night. Seven plus nine is what? Sixteen. What? I don't know. Sixteen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so like the 16th, then is when I'm going to see if I can try and organize it for. But anyway, uh, that being said, uh, now I want to introduce the uh, the John Conroy video that's uh, been put up by the MMAR Coalition Against Repeal. Uh, go check out the, the website, coalition, MMAR Coalition Against Repeal.com, and uh, get your impact statements in, okay? Your impact statements are an important part of everything that's happening right now, okay? Collecting the, the collection of these impact statements goes a long way to fighting the MMPR, okay? And what they're going to be doing is they're not just for you if you're the patient. Yes, it's going to impact you. But it's also going to impact your family, your parents, your kids, your wife, your brothers and sisters, your friends, your co-workers, okay? All these people are going to have to watch you either suffer or possibly break the law because you can't afford the new meds at the new proposed prices or the fact that they've taken away your grow and you can't get the right stuff that works for you anymore. All these are reasons for you to put an impact statement in. The more impact statements we have, the more support we can show. Okay? So that being the case, here's the video, John Conroy. The issue at hand is that Health Canada is about to eliminate all personal and designated production licenses for the purpose of growing our own medicine under the MMAR. Health Canada will, if successful, then only license large-scale commercial operators to produce our medicine at up to four times the current cost under the new MMPR. John Conroy will now explain what is at stake and how important your personal impact statements and donations are in preventing this legislation from becoming reality. A coalition is being formed against the repeal of the medical marijuana access regulations, particularly the personal production licenses and designated production licenses. Uh, the government is planning to introduce the medical marijuana 
regulations or marijuana for medical purposes regulations to basically repeal the what we call the MMAR and enact what we call the MMPR, which are regulations under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act in relation to medical marijuana. Jason Wilcox has been organizing the coalition against the repeal and established this coalition, and uh, we have a web page and email contact. It's basically a coalition of persons and special interest groups coming together to examine what the facts are to determine the impact of the proposed new regulations on the existing holders of Health Canada licenses to use and cultivate. So the purpose of the coalition is, one, to prevent some or all of the new regulations from becoming law, and we look there to see how they're reasonable or unreasonable on a constitutional right of access. Two, maintain the status quo until reasonable access is assured for those patients having a right to access, established by the Ontario Court of Appeal decision in Parker in 2000, which held that patients have a Section 7 charter constitutional right of reasonable access. So the key question is, are these new regulations reasonable limits on that constitutional right? And the courts have established uh, various tests for that. If the government is successful in repealing the regulations, then there may be a class action for damages suffered by people who have spent considerable sums attempting to uh, uh, access their cannabis medicinally by either growing it themselves or having it grown for them. And the government resisted changes to that approach over these 10, 11 years. The uh, Ontario Court of Appeal in uh, the Parker case did say that it, they found that um, Mr. Parker needed marijuana to control his symptoms and concluded that the prohibition on cultivation and possession was unconstitutional. However, there was no cultivation charge before the court. The court said had there been a cultivation charge before the court, it would have come to the same conclusion as it did with respect to the possession, which was a right of reasonable access. Now, at that time, there was no uh, supply. And, uh, of course, since then, various supply methods have arisen, the big one over the last 10 years being the personal producers and the designated growers. And uh, while there was also the government supply that uh, originally started out as for research purposes and then came for, uh, as a supply for, for some people, but uh, if anything, it had illustrated how the government... Uh, by a contract with one group wasn't really able to supply quality uh, and different strains that uh, many of the patients needed. So here's the new proposed supply is the licensed producer, which in some respects is a positive development to enable uh, producers to exist that will grow for many people as opposed to just one or two. Uh, but the costs of, of doing so and the way they propose it raise a number of questions that we really should get an independent opinion about. Going through the coalition is important because obviously I'm involved in all sorts of other cases and can't just be sitting in front of my computer or on the telephone for each call that comes in. Um, and we, But we will be assigning somebody to respond to everybody so that hopefully we can uh, uh, proceed forward with the coalition. Those of you who can afford counsel, of course, you can go to our webpage and, and uh, contact us directly in order to do that. Uh, we are certainly advising uh, people on all various aspects of uh, what's gone on in the past and what's proposed in the future and, and ways and means of trying to, uh, to deal with what's being proposed. Our objective is to raise $10,000 for the legal opinion, and uh, we have about 4,000 raised at the moment, so we still need uh, another 6,000 to get moving on the first stage, and that first stage is the most important as to just what we do thereafter. Um, ideally, we uh, should do something about the repeal of the existing regulations before the end of September when they won't take any more applications under those regulations. Uh, all applications under those regulations will expire March 31st, 2014. So that's our sort of ultimate deadline in terms of trying to do something to prevent repeal and enactment of the new or portions thereof. The big factor in terms of the uh, 
new uh, licensed producer is going to be uh, how people who have developed strains for themselves over many years, invested in plant and equipment, having been forced to do so by government in the face of efforts to try and open it up, are now suddenly faced with possibly losing that investment, losing the ability to make that particular strain. There's going to be patent uh, issues over strains that people have developed. And most importantly, it appears that the cost to the patient is going to be quadrupled in many cases. I'm hearing from people that they are able to produce at $2 a gram, and the government is uh, estimating an $8 a gram. So is that reasonable? Is that a reasonable limit on the patient's right of access? So here's the new proposed supply as the licensed producer, which in some respects is a positive development to enable uh, producers to exist that will grow for many people as opposed to just one or two. Uh, but the costs of, of doing so and the way they propose it raise a number of questions that we really should get an independent opinion about. John Conroy, and uh, thank you to uh, the Hemingway Coalition Against Repeal for putting this video out uh, so we can explain to people exactly what's what's going on. Uh, so get your impact statements in. It's uber important. While that's going on, uh, I'm waiting to hear back on uh, some permission to use some testimonials that I wanted to use in this show, and uh, where that hasn't happened, uh, I'm just going to share one of these... Uh, sets of testimonials that were ripped from the run from the cure video back in 2009 uh, they cover some depression and anxiety issues chronic back pain uh, getting rid of a mole getting rid of skin cancer and uh, how it's helped a terminal cancer survivor again this is cut out from the run from the cure video and uh, here you go there are three different ways to use the oil as a medication you can ingest it, you can vaporize it, or you can use it topically. But for internal diseases like cancer, lung cancer, that type of thing, uh, the internal treatment works magnificently. Well, I've had four open heart surgeries and probably five pacemakers. I've been through the mill as far as medical stuff goes. And I started taking this because my father was taking it for his cancer, which he doesn't have anymore, but this came along. It works perfect. It lets me do a day's work, or as much as I can safely. Let's face it, after four open hearts, you are still limited to what you can do. But I go all day. We, wife and I four-wheeler all over the place. We, uh, it virtually gave me my life back without the pain. I have suffered from uh, major depression since the age of 27. I suffer from anxiety attacks. I've also had three back injuries with, with constant aching in my back and that for years. And uh, when I took this medicine, uh, it seemed to take the aching from my back, it seems to cut down my panic attacks, and as late as I keep going on, it just seems to get better and better, my depression and anxiety attacks. I had a huge mole on my shoulder that was black and dotted I had a crusty, it wasn't a natural mole, and I'd been sort of concerned about it. And so actually knowing from Rick mentioning that it cured skin cancer and removed stuff like that, I decided to put a little oil on my mole and 
see if it works. So I put a little Band-Aid over it. I only applied it for like three days and then another four, and then in two weeks it was completely gone. Well, I had skin cancer. It's melanoma cancer, they told me. I was treated time after time, and I was burnt several times. I call it burnt. They have another name for it. But anyway, they, they burnt me several times, and uh, it wasn't doing no good. All the salve they gave me, I put it on and put it on. So I ran across this fellow they called Ricky Simpson. Well, you see my face. I know it's all wrinkled up, but there are no big holes in it. I used hemp oil for a number of conditions, migraine headaches, cyst on my ovary, arthritis, bad, bad skin allergies, snoring, upset stomach, diarrhea, bad, something wrong with my bowels and helped with every condition that I had. I had two months to live. I was cashing in, I didn't care then, and got a hold of Rick and Rick explained it, how this stuff works. The chemo and, and the radiation just kills everything inside of you. It doesn't give you a chance to live. And then when I look at my hemp oil, that's why I am sitting here today telling you that hemp oil does work. And that's why cannabis works. They call it hemp oil, call it cannabis oil, call it cannabis resin, call it Rick Simpson oil. I don't care what you call it, okay? It's magic, it's lightning in a bottle, okay? It makes a difference, it cures cancer, okay? Today, current events, okay, as of today, okay, not saying they happened today, but apparently there's, we've, we've had reports that the RCMP are going around to the schools in the county and telling kids that marijuana is worse than cigarettes and causes more cancer and that Harper is getting rid of medical marijuana. The argument they gave the kids is they told them that when someone says it's a natural plant from the earth, you can tell them it's a fossil, so is fossil fuel and oil. That being said, Mom will respond by sending letters to the education minister and the RCMP responsible for lying to the kids, looking into this story and uh, trying to find out more. That being said, my son told me a few years ago, and he lives in Alberta, uh, I happened to ask him, just out of fleeting curiosity, if he learned about marijuana in school and what he's been told. And His response was, in school he was told that if he smokes marijuana, he'll die. We all know that that's not the case, so I was quick to correct him, and I explained to him that it's a scare tactic that the adults use, like it's the boogeyman. The kid, it's, uh, I, I don't know, it's, I keep thinking of Bill Cosby back in the day, talking about uh, one of his comedy routines, talking about invisible snakes outside the crib so the kids wouldn't get under the bed. You stick your toe out there, they'll bite you, you'll shrivel up and be dead until morning. Yeah, exactly. Fear. That's how you best way to control people is through fear. But these are just some of the issues that Mum plans to bring up with the Deputy Health Minister Kevin McNamara on Tuesday, when we meet with him to discuss what they're going to do about the current situation of the MMPR, how they plan to address the concerns of almost 30,000 medical marijuana patients. and if there's any actual plan in place to meet the needs of the patients when the new program fails. He had to postpone an earlier meeting due to a loss in the family, and our condolences go out to him and his family at this difficult time. And Tim, if you get to see this show, I look forward to talking with you on Tuesday, and I'll let you guys, the viewers, know how it went next show. That being said, also we have Libby Davies. Uh, Libby Davies is the... MP on Bank, from Vancouver East, and in a letter that she sent to the health minister on February 19th, uh, 2013, she expresses her concerns about the proposed medical marijuana purposes regulations. In summary, she states that the new, pro the new program must be functional, accessible, and fulfill its original purpose, which is ensuring that the medical marijuana patients get timely access to high-quality medical marijuana. The proposed MMPR, I believe, does not fulfill this original purpose. It will further restrict access, will be more expensive for many patients who are already on low income and facing additional health costs, and the options for access for patients are severely restricted. 
I urge you to act in good faith and respond to the many recommendations submitted to both the program and work with your officials to improve the proposed MMPR. Sincerely, Libby Davies, MP, Vancouver East. Thank you, Libby. That's an awesome letter. Really well said. And uh, happy to uh, have found that you wrote that. Thank you very much. Uh, also posted recently on Facebook, I uh, came across the article, Canada's War on Pot Just Got a Little Weirder. In an article posted by the Canadian Drug Policy Coalition on February 14th, Prohibition took another strange turn this week when it was reported that RCMP officers in Alberta have started the strap on snowboards and patrol the Lake Louise and Akisha ski resorts in an effort to deter substance abuse. From the CBC, the officers who are in uniform and carrying weapons are focusing their attention on substance abuse on the chairlifts and gondolas. It's going to deter people from bringing narcotics or have that second look of doing something on the ski hill because they know there's going to be a police presence, said RCMP Corporal Jeff Campbell, the detachment commander in Lake Louise. The RCMP is touting the ski patrols as a proactive policing initiative, but given that neither ski hill, nor any ski hill for that matter, has any real need for a police presence, is it an appropriate and responsible use of police resources? This program, which explicitly promotes the additional enforcement of a highly unpopular law, is emblematic of a much larger problem, the growing discontent between the RCMP and the Canadian public. In an Ipsos Reid poll from the late December on public confidence in the RCMP found that support for the Mounties has decreased sharply over the past five years. So how could Canada lower its policing costs and repair public confidence in the RCMP? One of the simplest solutions to these two critical problems would be to regulate and tax cannabis. This would free up police resources currently being wasted on the suppression of a substance that the majority of Canadians think should not be illegal, while at the same time restoring faith in police officers by removing the burden of such an unpopular law. The mum calendar is done. The mum calendar has been done. And the mum calendar is available at the following locations. Hemp Heaven, Steve's Hydroponics, SNL Works Hydroponics, Soul Harbor, Sweetly Smoke Shop on Hydroponics, David Shea has them, I have them, Debbie, the chair of Mum, has them, and I believe Michael Dillon has some. So if you're looking for one, get a hold of us. There's no reason you can't get one. If you want, I can get them signed for you too if you're looking for a certain month done. So come get a hold of me. We'll see if we can't make it happen. Also, Mum has copies of Ted Smith's Hempology 101 book for sale. Right here, Hempology 101. They're $20. And then there's Mum's Funny Medicine for $10. That's a great book to explain to children why you might be using medical marijuana and what it means to them and you. They'll all be available at our next meeting and can also be purchased online. All right, today we're going to be talking about the herbal air. Now it's a nice little rig. This is it here. This is the air pump that drives the air and fills the bag. And you're on up. Which is right there. From cold, it takes two and a half minutes. Okay, right now it's already hot because I've been vaping while I've been doing the show. A couple things I need to mention about it. Um, when you take it off of the bag, off of the part here, uh, the stem is really hot. I hold on to it for a second before I put it to my lips so I don't burn myself. It's pretty toasty, especially if you've been vaping for quite a while, and uh, it gets really warm. So, just caution you there. Also, the little cup that you put the cannabis in, 
also gets ridiculously hot. One of the products that they don't give you, that they should give you, is a set of forceps. Okay. Which you can pick up a lot of times in an art supply place or places like uh, Princess Auto or things like that. Uh, they come in very handy. Uh, I think you can even get them at some of the uh, drugstores now. Um, that being said, it uh, when I turn this baby on, I usually set her in 375 or 380 again. From that point, you're looking at two and a half minutes for it to fill the bag. Um, it's a it's a very simple machine. It works very thoroughly. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy about it is. Uh, like you can either fill the bag, or if you remove this, you can be the bag. So you just and that tastes so good. You're not burning any plant. It just tastes like it smells. It's just nice and clean. It's almost sweet. Okay, and. Uh, I, I recommend this to anybody. If you're looking for a good vaporizer, okay, you, you can't buy anything worth it plastic for less than $200. This is about $250. Um, it's a third of the price of the Volcano. It's at least as good as the Volcano. Um, it's, just, it's just a great little rig. After 30, after 30 minutes, it shuts itself off. Okay, I can shut it off like that. Okay, when, when it comes up to temperature, the light turns green. If it's been on for a long time and it starts to overheat, the light will flash on and off red to give you a warning that it's overheat, so you can shut it down. Take off your, your lid here. Make sure there's no cannabis stuck to that. And this cup is ridiculously hot. If you pick it up, you will burn yourself. Okay. I recommend that these guys supply these for, for, for people. But I know they won't, so what are you going to do? Do, 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 do? I think it all fell out already. Yep. Okay. And once there's no product in it, it cools almost instantly. But if there's product in it, it holds the heat for a ridiculously long time. So I'll load it up. And like I said, to load it, you don't bust your cannabis. You just break some pieces off until the bowl is full. Okay. And then you just drop it in. Pick your temperature again, like I said, 375, 380. This goes all the way up to 400. Put your lid on, <coughs> finish the bag. Okay, right now the light's red. And now it's green. Because if you're gonna pick a color, it might as well be green. So that's the Herbal Air. It's a great little rig. Well worth the uh, addition of a set of forceps. And uh, in my opinion, one of the best bangs for your buck for a vaporizer that you could possibly get. Like I said, there's a bag. You can be the bag. You can attach a plastic whip to it. And I really don't know what else to say about it. Uh, it's just a fantastic rig. That's just my opinion. But David Shea, uh, he's got the video that he'd like to, that he put together for everybody on uh, an assist to rolling, uh, kind of like the roll mats that you can get, uh, I've seen from Raw and such. They're more like a, like a, a wicker kind of thing and you, they're to help you roll your uh, joints and it makes it easier. I've never been very good at them, uh, but since watching his video, I've tried a couple of times now, I'm getting a little better at it. But Dave shows quite aptly how to do it. Uh, so here you go, Dave. Thanks for the input. There you go.
All right. Um, what I'm going to show you here today is how to use a piece of fabric to roll a joint. You may have seen rolling machines and that kind of thing, and uh, you know part of that is where I got this idea. Everybody has a piece of fabric, and uh, if you don't have a piece of fabric, maybe you can use a piece of cloth. Regardless, this here process is very simple. So all you need to do is make sure that you pull up the piece of fabric but at the same time you're pinching the cannabis within the fabric and the so you can see that there's a pinch there and what will end up happening is you'll see it's already happened now and I haven't even used the joint you get this roll configuration alright so once I got my roll configuration and I can do all of this in one step. I'm just showing you how it all works. I can put in my piece of paper. And I don't want to push my paper away. So I don't want to push my flat edge all the way. Like I don't want to pinch the fabric to the ground. But I do... Oops, it's stuck. But I do want to have a little gap here and, and almost pinch it so that the pot stays where it is, the pot rolls as it is. And ta-da, there you go. Now I don't have a lot of dexterity, so rolling something like this on my own would be uh, not very easy to do. People with arthritis, this might help them as well. And uh, you know, this can potentially be a product to sell, which is what I'm looking into. But I want this also to be freely available for others, so that. If you can't afford to buy a rolling mat for two bucks or whatever it is, like I say, you can get a piece of plastic or something else. The actual process is very simple. Awesome, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, um, and for the next show, uh, I've got a couple interviews lined up. I'm waiting to hear back for permission on a couple of testimonials. Boink. If you have a testimonial that you'd like to submit, please send it in. I'd like to uh, include it on the show. I'd like to thank the computer tuner for providing the equipment I use to make the show possible. And uh, I'd like to mention uh, that uh, you go check out freemark.ca. And uh, send in your support. Write a letter, donate, become part of the solution. And uh, let your voice be heard and let Mark know that uh, you'd like to see him get back home. Nobody should have, he should, the, the thought that he was extradited to the United States to serve crime for a crime that he would not have gone to jail for here in Canada is atrocious, okay? Talking about seeds, people. Okay, thanks for watching. Be nice to each other. Peace, love, and hippie shit. Bye-bye.